Welcome everybody. It's uh, Russ Curtis here, um, counselor, licensed clinical mental health counselor, counselor educator for the last 20 years. And we're gonna talk today about narcissism, gaslighting, and the Cartman drama triangle, which those of you who are already in the behavioral health profession probably know about. Um, this has been around a while, and it's one that I uh, find that I've used a lot more than I thought I would have um, in counseling and in educating counselors. And I think it shows us, it, it works really nice. It's uh, in terms of kind of showing uh, narcissist behavior. So let's look at this for a minute is the Cartman drama triangle. This is where we're playing roles that are destructive in relationships. Okay. So we can have been victimized. Okay. Most people have trauma of some sort, but there's a difference between having been a victim and uh, versus playing a victim. Okay. So what we're looking at here is kind of playing roles. Um, in order to gain favor or to look better or to avoid responsibility for actions. And the three roles that folks can play, and particularly I think it relates to people that are um, higher on the end of narcissism scale, uh, is persecutor, rescuer, victim. And if we were to take a scenario of cheating or infidelity, again, this is when committed relationships and one of the partners is cheating, it's a which is a, a common characteristics of folks who are high in narcissism. Um, if you, when you first uh, maybe confront somebody about that, you know, you start having your suspicions, you gather evidence, you can look at my other videos, post infidelity stress disorder, checklists for determining, uh, you know, um, if somebody's cheated. Once confronted, they'll start persecuting. How dare you? say that about me? How dare, how could you think that about me? Uh, so you can wind up that they'll play that role in order to get you to calm down and in order to scare you in a way. Okay, so not uncommon for folks high in narcissism to be attracted to people who are very empathetic and perhaps even empaths, folks who are very intuitive um, and, and sensitive and so forth. I think they're drawn to the light. <laughs> they're drawn to the light of an empath. They don't have it. It's not fully developed for them. So once confronted with infidelity, they'll persecute, okay? They, wanna, they want you to be quiet, okay? Um, because they don't want this getting out in any way. Um, then they can play the victim about this, okay? So it can be like, well, I've just had, you know, so much going on and, you know, I've got uh, so much issues in my life and stuff. Then they can move towards the rescuer, which would be, but what about that time that I threw that surprise party for you or that time I bought that meal for you or whatever. So these are all interrelated um, highly correlated, I would say, at times, and, um, and they can be switched very quickly. And one particular, and, and by the way, folks, if you don't like this exit stage door left, but, but I do talk about, because frankly, after a bunch of years in um, the psychology or in counseling field, I do find that some concepts such as uh, chakras and meridians and so forth explain this, and uh, the behavior of narcissism. And this is just very, um, uh, what we would say, lower chakra stuff, security, sex, and power, okay? And what's not developed, so those are the first three. Um, the first one is root chakra security. The second is sacral, which is sex and creativity. And the third is uh, the, the uh, solar plexus and power. And those can be either overdeveloped or imbalanced, imbalanced. While the upper ones, which is heart and compassion and um, intuition, which is kind of giving you this indication of the connectivity of everything, is, um, is that doesn't come into play. They're more into these games, okay? So <clears throat> this is not uncommon uh, to see people play these games with the Cartman Drama Triangle. Now, for instance, if somebody uh, were to have cheated or to call them out on that, they will become angry at you for your reaction, okay? And you may be really angry, okay? And you have a right to be if a, if a huge violation of trust like that happened. 
And instead of saying, oh man, I screwed up. Uh, you know, I'm going to have to own this. This is, this is my stuff. I own it. I admit to it. Uh, what can we do? But when they become angry at your normal reaction, you're, you're probably, they're probably playing this persecutor game to kind of scare you or attempt to scare you and keep you quiet. Okay. So it's kind of easier to say that. And if you persist, now be careful. Um, uh, they can move into victim role, uh, you know, oh, poor me, I just had so much stress, um, this person was coming after me, and then they'll move to the rescuer, oh, think of all the great things I've done for you that one time or whatever, um, so just be aware of these roles related to, gar uh, to narcissism, gaslighting clearly fits within persecution, and it also, in a weird way, it fits into victim too, because if they're talking to friends or relatives, it can be like, you know, I'm really concerned about so-and-so, you know, um, I'm really concerned that they would say that about me. There must be something wrong. Maybe the, their, their depression or anxiety is kicking up or what have you. And uh, you know right away then that we're dealing with uh, somebody who's playing these games. Um, and that you have every right to become angry. Now, you'll see plenty of videos about um, what they call the term gray rock. So if you are in a relationship and there's no way you can get out of it with somebody high in narcissism, the term gray rock is that you want to provide as little emotional energy to that person as possible. You want to keep yourself very quiet. Um, and, uh, you know, this would be if you catch cheating and, and that is not okay in your relationship, you go to the attorney, you start figuring things out there, go to a, a behavioral health professional, but you don't share a bunch of stuff with this person because they're going to start playing these games to get you to be quiet, to feel sympathy for them. And if that doesn't work, they're going to continue with prosec uh, persecuting. Okay, so I love this aspect here is that education is the best defense against people that are high in narcissism. I agree 100%. And so let's continue. There's such great videos out there. Let's continue to share this. Um, and if you're in the behavioral health profession, just know that uh, you might be a little bit of a target, but you also need to recognize when your clients are in relationships with these folks. You need to be sharp about that. All right, good people. We'll have some more content coming out later. Talk to you soon.